friends, I welcome you. This is Shipbreakers, Stars Without Numbers, Revised, Episode 11. We follow the crew of the LAS Golden Goose as they scrap and salvage their way out of whatever situation they've dug themselves into. I have to say, there is a high chance we may start salvaging a ship today before the end of this episode. But before we start, we have to start at the beginning, which means goals. Now we've had the good fortune. We technically started on time for the first time. So we'll have <laughs> more time than usual to talk about goals. But goals, what do we think? Quentin, you still have to get everyone through the salvage job. Still his main goal. He wants to at least check that box. Van V, determine if I am always in control or if there's a puppet master. Yeah, I, I, I still like that one because we didn't talk at all about the gland or anything last time. Not that I really know what I would ask about it, but I feel like that's the key to that. It's either that the or... Gland, you're talking about the link? The link. organ that's in your brain? Yeah. Yes, very well. It's, just to be clear, it's not a gland. Gland is a very specific medical term that refers to. Okay. It secretes nothing. It secretes nothing. That's true. Oh, it the appendix anything. in my brain. Okay. It's, I mean, it has a purpose. Uh, you you wish it sure was an appendix that... in your brain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was useless enough to remove. Uh, Minerva. Asta. Decide Evaluate the... my breaks. Sorry, what was it? Evaluate, oh, evaluate my brakes. brakes very well. Such an interesting goal. Cannot wait. Let's do that right in front of Fairy. <laughs> I actually was thinking that Fairy I might no ask brakes. Fairy to help. That Depending we're... on how things go. I will comment more on that later. If we Fairy has certainly cards. told you that she has no brakes. That's fair. Yes. Three. Her Everything you know about both AI and humans seems to not technically apply to her. Her position seems very unique. I think that... I don't know that I've really mentioned it. I think that the, the boogeyman stories of uh, the perimeter agency, something you now know to actually be true. Like, you have physically interacted with a perimeter agency communications device and you know that they're watching something um the perimeter agency have three very specific goals that were like do not allow this this and this to happen and her uh, existence seems to violate two of them oh. as as was mentioned by three like because of that, they created the carrier to stay on the move. Otherwise, the perimeter agency would have time to like send agents to wherever they were located at. So right. staying on the move on the most heavily armed and armored warship in the sector seems like a, with extremely controlled who's allowed on and off, right, is the best way to avoid spies and saboteurs from, from like shutting her down. Um, I feel like that if that wasn't made clear, there's been small talk between you and three between the episodes, so I just want to make sure that that's where we're at. Crew goal. The previous crew goal, which can still be the same crew goal, protect Van V and get him on the ship in some way, shape, or form. What is Van V? Do we just collect him in a dust box? And <laughs> we put him in an urn and stick him on the mantle place. <laughs> Let me out. We give him a tank on the bridge. <laughs> Um. Hmm. I mean, I, they I, haven't indicated that he's super under threat at this point, right? Like, they basically said that they are comfortable with him continuing forward as long as... If the board as... signs off on the rough agreement that you have worked out, uh -huh. they have basically said that they will commit an act of war and lie to the other governments of this sector to not only release him, but allow him to pass through the quarantine zone. 
despite the fact he's a known duster. I, I wonder if uh, we can, not broaden is the right word, but to take the crew goal and instead say negotiate a a path forward that doesn't make us indebted to fairy forever, but also doesn't violate Quentin's Lita beliefs or something like that. Because I feel like that makes it more broad for the whole crew to get out as opposed to... Uh, I think you're... I think you're like 99% of the way there. I don't know oh, that okay. you can accomplish a goal you've already done. I guess we're a lot further along than I thought we were then. <laughs> I I thought you guys were pretty close, but if you don't think you're close, then that is a legitimate goal. Well, I, I've been arguing with myself Ludeman most of the time. I see shaking so. his head. Maybe this isn't as prepared as I thought. No, um, I mean, I feel like we're pretty close. You guys no, drop some right. stuff and starts with that numbers chat, and I did not have time to read it, just like Dunamis. Um, I chose to not read it. <laughs> I, well, I, I just didn't have time to read it. I'll probably have to read it during the break, but <laughs> clearly you all had thought about this. So for sure, it. what is the crew goal then? Um, how about essentially, uh, no, I, 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 no, 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 my idea. I've decided to abandon it. Okay. Very well. Last <laughs> stick, are rejecting. Stick with the original then, I guess. Uh, to the... find a way to leave with Van V yes. on the ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, again, that's a goal that's essentially already accomplished in my eyes. Yeah, we like, will have. They that just need happen. to sign off on this agreement in Van V. Say free man. Um, or how about? Yeah, I agree uh, with chat. The crew goal is just the word no. <laughs> <laughs> if you say yes to anybody, you failed your goal. Oh, man, no. <laughs> that's beautiful. I'm not in a dire situation. Oh, right? I mean, hard. we could, yeah, like we could put it back to break a ship. I, we could, yeah, we could definitely revert back there. I think and, that's definitely our next goal, like where we're going. Being so permitted to disembark our from previous the one, ship right away yeah <laughs> and going in that direction would all be progress towards breaking a ship acquire visible like vis visibility of the ship we intend to break <laughs> right let's do break a ship <laughs> as long as you're working towards it you get the point we undock from the ferry too roughly and break the docking color oh my god <laughs> done Please. nailed it got Please. it <laughs> I'm going to go get that. Sorry, I'm not used to piloting as dust. I usually have more limbs. Just swirling around a control <laughs> stick like I You're going to have limbs. Exert enough force. I think we're going to figure that out. <laughs> Three has left to go meet with the other members, whoever he can, to get a majority vote on the agreements that you have so far. Is there any changes you all wanted to make? My notes here... My recollection is that you will form a independent organization. Now, I know that you're going to change this already. You've countered offer, which is why we're reviewing this, so that the audience knows that you've offered a counter offer. So your counter offer was independent organization that will be called the Golden Goose. Workshop in it. Kane, did you have a suggestion, I think? Uh, it. Or is that your if, own? So for for the tie-in that you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, tying in Minerva's long-term goal with this, Minerva's still attached to the idea of rebuilding the order or rebuilding an order. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you convince Minerva that the Imago Dei is dead, it doesn't stop Minerva from being a virtuous being and trying to do good, but that the idea of trying to rebuild an Imago Dei order is essentially dead, then... Minerva has no vested interest in the name of the organization okay. or any of the implied complications involved in trying to turn it into a religious order. <laughs> okay. So what are, um, what are we thinking of as the name then? Uh, golden Goose Fleet or Order of the Golden Goose. We could combine the order two. Order of want. the Golden Goose works really well. That sounds uh, really cool. So you are going to create a charitable organization, a humanitarian focused, yeah, non governmental focus organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that you will wash artifacts of psionic power through information yeah, and essentially it, one of the goals will be to you like recruit and utilize psionic uh individuals to like facilitate these humanitarian missions as well okay like, to specifically make it associated with uh you know that aspect these will be artifacts relics and treasures you pick up during your journey 
things that are not of a psionic nature, texts that are not related to your humanitarian mission, will be given first draft, first pick by Finana Fleet. Uh, newly discovered planets that you don't feel that you have the capability to control, which I'll be honest, from their point of view, you don't, like you simply don't. Whether that's true <laughs> or not, the contract makes it clear that if you decide you want to rule a system that you've discovered, that's on you. Like, at that point, they don't have any obligation to help you, but they also won't stop you. But if you turn control of that system over Fanana, they will pay you for it essentially and the cost will be very high you know access mm -hmm. to a new pool of resources space bases humanity robots like everything that they can find in a new system they will pay you handsomely for to expand their reach to the stars above beautiful uh yeah that's that's roughly the overall stroke, like the broad strokes. Um, I think we're also. Hey, uh, my ahead. other thought is for to maintain some sort to to maintain the neutrality. If these first picks are to be done secretly, if we had something like um, a discount on general maintenance costs, not repairs, not upgrades, just general maintenance costs. It gives us a preferential reason to show up there and publicly it's them just supporting our charitable actions. So we Agreed. have a different a reason to keep showing round. up to Fanana to be like, Hey, we discovered this thing. Mm -hmm. It's got a uh, as reason. part of it. I, I believe was paying off the ship on the table. It was, but you kind of walked away from that. We didn't, we didn't bite on it initially. Just you did not just... bite on it initially. That's the main motivator for are sure. You, certainly are not. you walking back on that one? You you want the ship payments to be I mean, look, throwing a ten percent discount on maintenance is a non issue. What yeah. for the for the vast sums of money we're talking about here. Um, no, the bigger thing... the thing is you have to be alive to do that maintenance, which means you've been successful in your mission. Fair fronting you hundreds of thousands of exchange credits it's not a sticking point by yeah. any means certainly not will, a requirement i'll tell you what i need a roll to summate this whole contract from one mm. of the three of you and is there anything the other two of us could do to try to support that role you i do i do have one more point for van v standpoint is okay. fanana basically is direct competition to his family's business uh, so he doesn't. I don't know about <laughs> direct competition, but yeah, I mean they are competitors. I don't know that Fanana's like, hey, we're going to construct things though. Your family probably makes a lot of money from them as well, yes. right? Like it's. I mean, it's it's a open economy exchange of ideas. You know, they I guess the, they have a relationship together. I th he doesn't want anything we're doing to impact that relationship or that business like they things... have indicated to you in the past that they have no control over what the government of the federated principality can do to your family as a result of this right mm -hmm. like they if they are not going to risk local agents to protect you or do something to your family like they're not going to hold your family hostage because that would require such an incredible expenditure of espionage assets but on the other hand, they also can't protect your family, right? They just simply don't yeah. have the power. So basically, to do so. Biz business as usual. Like, yeah, don't All right. don't Maintain use my family against quo. me in either way. Yeah. Okay. Would um fair? It, it, do we also want to try to get them to um help transport the Minerva to Midapile before installing the spike drive? Was that still? I mean, something the Federated you were Principality in? has indicated that they are going to go pick that thing up. Oh, I thought they had specifically left that to us as like a like. No, well, I think like... they said that they were gonna go pick it up and drag it. Oh, okay. Well, if that's the case, then certainly. I'm trying to remember now. I I had thought they had it's, specifically. It's just gonna take left it to while, us right? as like, a like. You you got to handle that part, like mostly I think to give they us. They said they needed a year to get started working on the drive, right? Like, it there's no like point a... to going and getting the ship if there's nothing to put in mm -hmm. it. 
Right. It was right. one year to make the drive. And we had, I don't think, I, I think we'd floated some ideas about how to get ship and drive together, but I don't think we'd made right. anything concrete. I yeah, mean, no, there's I, just I a they creation of, as a sort of like is, carrot and stick situation to get uh, Minerva to give up some more goods. Getting the ship is not going to be difficult. It's just going to okay. take them time, right? Like they definitely can detach. Now they're going to need a specialty ship to do it, right? Like you need a big ship to drag a cruiser especially a a war cruiser that's specifically designed to not have humans on it right like it, this is a big big ship they're going to need a big big ship to tow it well but and that's kind of why i thought they that definitely Fanana have and Ferry such a ship yes could do Ferry it as well could also do this so um, here's here's what quentin might might propose to minerva ooh, in this here's thing, an idea. which is mostly around the idea sorry would you like to go oh no you you, you were talking Okay, sorry. It, um, mostly around the idea that this is a like becomes a diplomatic play where it is a public like uh, uh, you know sort of demonstration from Fanana of cooperation with uh, uh, the Republic, right? In terms of delivering this ship, right? To for let me for cut repair. you off right here, real quick. That would require Fanana to reveal why it's delivering the ship on your behalf. Maybe not public, but Questions certainly governmental. Asked. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. even with fair the government, enough. the That's Federated fair. Principality is going to go, why are you delivering the ship on their behalf? Okay. And Fanon is going to go, it's classified. <laughs> we have a contractual <laughs> obligation. <laughs> it just, it, it just makes them. things they complicated for no, you. Fair. Honestly, the two of them doing shadow espionage shit, not a big deal. Normal. But when someone starts asking questions about how you have the power to swing this, that's that. going to be the problem. Okay. No, fair. I, I I retract that line of thought. I will need a roll from one of you. Kane, did you have one more thing? Sorry. I, oh. No, you had Okay. No, I will it, need a roll. It falls on the same logic. From one cool. of you. I guess the rest of the group can offer a plus one to the roll. On an eight, you are successful. On a 10 plus... They will buy off the rest of your ship. You will oh, essentially man. have zero debt. And what skill shall we roll? Administer, uh, lead, or uh, trade? Talk. I okay. think... Mm, I have two of those at zero. I think talk is out of... The Notice. range of this. We're talking and negotiations. No I mean, mm -hmm. really, this should be a trade role. This is making a contractual role. Interesting. deal. But administer well, and lead, I'm trade. gonna throw in there as well. I have trade zero. Okay. Do you are you a charismatic or are you neutrally charismatic? Uh zero. Does diplomat do anything there? Uh that's a good question. On trade? Diplomat. Let me read that. I do not know how it works. You know, how, well, I mean, so <laughs> you know how to get your you way in personal negotiations. Any dice check related to negotiation or diplomacy. Do you have level oh, okay. one or two? One. Okay, then yes, you can re-roll ones on this check because it is uh, a negotiation. That's pretty so, good. Well, so. I'm a negative one to trade. Total. <laughs> so... It it sounds like Van V. Was yeah, I have a max of a plus two bonus. Well, I think I mean I think it makes sense because this is I mean this whole time. this all started with Van V, right? As soon as he he set the alarm off, he started on negotiations, and so a lot has been added to it since. So I, I can I can reason with it. If it was just using the skills, I don't, I'm, I'm like doing that, but <laughs> for sure, I, okay, I'll do that. It okay. would be charisma, though, right? Yes, the ability to reroll ones, I think, is you know it'll be significant. Sixteen. 0.7% of the All time. Right. 2d6, two modifier, one for each of them. Uh, it's, ju it's just a plus one for the party. A plus one total. Got right. It. And then if you don't have anything in trade, you're just, you know. It's an eight. All there right. Any ones. ones here. Dang twos. Not red. Okay, there are no ones here. Okay. So. Good thing we got that assist. The deal <laughs> is complete, as is. If you're satisfied... Like, this is your chance to either say yes or no. You have protection. You're allowed to move around freely. They want you to 
complete your current contractual obligations, which they know about because they've read your all of your memories as best they can. So that means finishing the salvage job mm-hmm. and then doing you like I don't know about taking other jobs at this point because you're at the point where you have things taking you in many different directions to look for ancient relics. So maybe right. other jobs is off the table in the future. Um, but how think, do we involve the audience? So with the audience will get involved. The audience shows up in chat and talks to us and leaves incredible messages. And <laughs> their true. girlfriends give them or fiancés give They're them fantastic. special dinners. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. Like, I, I, this is an involved audience. We don't need to dangle anything more in front of them. <laughs> They've got the meat that they want. Well, you know, from Gwen's perspective, he's he's ready to go. This this is probably as good as it gets. I think the last conversation you have with three before getting sent off is um, it's like riding his horse up to you. He has a signed document. Now, of course, this is this is a digital world, so it's basically meaningless, right? You know what I mean? Like th- <laughs> when you go back in your bodies, you won't be holding a piece of paper. It's a PDF. I mean, like because <laughs> it is a digital signature. Signed. <laughs> Um, he says, I think that after you have completed your current contractual obligations, I have no consensus from the board on this, but I think it would be wise, Mr. Van Dorn, for you to immediately move to track down the secrets of the dust. If you were able to prove that not just you, but all dusters could be trusted if the secrets of this technology could be unveiled our need for secrecy in your case would no longer be necessary and it would be much safer for you to frankly exist in this sector fine mother got it (laughs) it's not exactly what i said but if that's what it (laughs) takes to get you motivated very well well i I appreciate that you know i think desire to exist is good motivation that you've given me uh and you know what i think we're heading in that direction a little bit anyway so makes sense to me i do like existing ambassador quentin alexander polk the fourth he holds a hand down from the saddle for you to shake quentin shakes the hand absolutely i have a parting gift for you my friend Even someone who has lived as long as I have and has navigated code as I have can take a long time to dissect the memories a full life lived by someone like you. And I caught a glance of a puzzle you are trying to solve. I have a hint for you. The answer is gravity. Hmm. Hmm. A line becomes a curve. Thank you. Very well. Hey, uh, three, I, I got a question. Oh, maybe this is a bit more for fairy. I don't know who. Uh, is How do I exist outside of this space without uh, taking over Van Dorn's body again? Because... That is a question that you need to solve yourself with Mr. Van Dorn. Uh Uh-huh. All right. I don't much like doing that if it's against his will, and he doesn't seem to like it, but I guess we'll we'll figure that out. Have you talked to him? Yeah, we... Yes. I feel like there's been a lot of just them talking (laughs) face-to-face. I mean, the thing is, though, that this guy knows that you're lying because he's been here for every second of, basically, your existence, right? Like, You've had a conversation, but you haven't talked to him about what either of you want to do going forward. You know what I mean? Like, that's uh, yeah. Van V and Van true. Dorn has not had a conversation. We could flashback about, to a couple but, combos, you know. I don't know <laughs> that we need a yeah. flashback. I think we okay. need to have that conversation. That's for sure. Here and now, in the future. Yeah. So yeah, admittedly, I thought a lot in a lot of last session when you guys were negotiating, I was like, oh, we're in the back arguing about what to do next. That. That was kind of the off-screen stuff I was thinking, but let, yeah, let's we, if for it's sure. on-screen needed for sure. Yeah. Uh, he rides over to you, Minerva, and says, "Minerva Hasta, I cannot claim to be an expert in AI, but you are not what I thought, and you are not what you seem. 
There is much about you that is shrouded from my eyes. And I believe that despite my advanced age, you may be a finer programmer than I will ever be. That gives you power. If I may, a question. Yes. Normally, I am aware of attempts made to access any of my code. Was the way where you granted access, or was it some other program that you defeated? I don't know what you mean. I suppose I I'm... took what I wanted, what I needed to determine what? whether or not you were a threat. Was there resistance to that effort? What a curious question. The fact that you don't know the answer is troubling. It is. He looks at you and he says, there was less than I expected. I see. Now, you don't remember resisting his intrusions at all. Yeah. But also, if you were, I mean, he, this guy has told you that you're a better programmer than him. If you were actively resisting him, you should have not only been aware of it, but very easily beat him back. Right. Confusing. Confusing indeed. Troubling even. That answers some of Minerva's questions with other questions. You left Good. the back door open. Thank you for, thank you for telling me. You are not a standard human AI, but you are still a digital intelligence. And that makes you legally a person in the eyes of Fanana Fleet. You ever require a place to stay, the ship could act as a home. We if recognize your personhood. If the need arises, I will gladly take the offer, and I appreciate it. It is difficult for me to remember how the passage of time in your reality works, but I believe that by the time you step off the ship, you will owe us money. I think it would be wise to settle up when we arrive. Uh, I'm afraid that will be some passage of time for me. We might meet again. It just disappears. Oh. And after all that, he's going to charge us for rent for that little bit of time. I was going to ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Fairy floats over. Oh. Uh, she is with Anika, who is the concierge, the second concierge. Um, two of them are having a quiet conversation, but it's clear that they're just biding time while the four of you figure out what's going on. I think Dust Van V turns and looks at uh, Van Dorn and is like, well, now what? I, I mean, we've been granted our freedom, so to speak. We're allowed to leave, but how do we leave? I mean, us specifically. Oh, you're talking to me. Sorry. I forgot yeah, I have to move my mouth to talk. Wave I've dust never hand. done it before. Um... Uh, I don't know. And, uh, you know, Fairy's just like, when you're ready to go, we will begin the process to take you out. Are are you ready to go? Well, well, I, I guess I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking specifically, Fairy, uh, do I have to go out the way I came in? Meaning, am I piloting Van Dorn's body again? Because that didn't seem like something that's all too fair to him, and he didn't really appreciate that. I'm just wondering if there's any alternatives. Uh, well... Uh, yes, you can go back out that way. Um, we could also attempt to contain you within your dust, which I'm afraid would probably leave you unable to interact with the outside world. You would simply be a passenger within his brain, and I don't mean like you would be in his position, 
um, what would probably happen is, is that you would have no ability to sense the outside world. It would be a prison of nothingness. Truly horrifying to contemplate. Um, and, of course, the third option would be that we attempt to do as I do with my associates, and you would fully merge with Van Dorn. The dust and the body might be separate entities, but the consciousnesses would become one. Hmm. Van Dorn, what, what do you think here? And, and I am talking to you this time. You need to move your mouth no, to no, respond. Yeah, so, you know, like, what? every time you've acknowledged him, right, afterwards he's been active, but if you leave him alone for a while, he stands perfectly still and doesn't breathe or blink. Um, so that's the thing, right? Like, he's never needed that and technically doesn't need it as, like, a as a consciousness. So the programs here don't have him do it automatically. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't. I, what do you want to stay? What do you want to do, MV? I mean, it's it's tech. It's your life, okay? It's your life. Even if I took the body back over, I've never had a conversation with my father, with my my stepmother, my brother and and sister. I don't. I mean, I know these people, but they don't know me. But they know everything about us. They know everything about you. I don't think well, anybody knows very much about me. Well, I've been trying to ask you, but it doesn't seem like you've offered very much. It's, but it's... How do I... What do I even have? I We're, didn't... <laughs> I didn't know that I was a consciousness. I honestly thought my entire life was <laughs> a joke. A cruel trick that I was some sort of ghost riding along, watching and judging all of your actions. I never well, considered that I was an independent being capable of and like he just looks down at his hands just like doing things are you two having this as a private conversation or are it we all doesn't sound like no. it sounds like you're no. just doing it right there pretty, in front of fairy yeah, and the other pretty two. Open. yeah are you interested in exploring a concept of some measure of independence and individuality that the van v or van dorn the van dorn i don't know i've never thought about it if there was a way to give you the option you would have time to consider and choose to use or not use it when um at that point perks up a little bit and and says does this i don't know if this makes any sense at all but how much time in here would it be during the jump from where we are to where we're going. The jump uses a lot of power, which limits the amount of processing available to mm, okay. the transhuman interface device. Time passes relatively much more normally. Mm. Days every second rather than years. Well, you know... Van Dorn, I don't know if this makes any sense whatsoever, but what if can you stay temporarily? Experience. I think if he time. stays and I leave, though, that means I'm in I'm in a box, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Fairy says no. We can. You can remain. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure what's being discussed. Which one of them will just... control the body, and which one will remain digital? No, I'm just simply wondering if Van Dorn wants the opportunity to live a stretch of time by himself here and then give Van Dorn and Van V a chance to have a conversation on the other and decide then. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Well, I, I mean, I, I've always been a straight shooter. Might as well be straight shooter myself. 
the agreement we just signed to be, you know, the good guys, basically humanitarian. I, I can't go back and take control and not knowing, knowing you'd be there just watching without any power. I, I'm willing to go through a merger if you are, Van Dorn. I, I'm willing to explore that option. I think it's time to make a roll. Definitely charisma. Okay. <laughs> I'm willing to take several different skills on this. Talk. Trade. Pilot. Pilot. Lead. Not pilot. pilot. Absolutely <laughs> not. Zero percent chance. <laughs> There's a negative chance that I will. But I am piloting the body. <laughs> Ratatouille. Ratatouille. If the two of you merge together, you're not piloting the body anymore. It's, it's just true. your body. It's true. You are taking your all right, uh, I'll do talk with Chris. I will see like. Okay, once again, <gasps> you can reroll once. Oh, no, oh goodness, thank God that's a one to reroll. Uh, you need to get a pretty high number on that one reroll, though. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you I get, get to, to keep re-roll? rerolling me once? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Reroll once. Oh, I think re-roll? you said once that you just re-roll, or you just roll ones. Like, I just... <laughs> For the folks that aren't Amazing. looking at the screen, he's rolled a one three times in a row now. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, Amazing. your new total is a seven. It's a seven. Okay. Seven. All right, let me double check the difficulties. That may be a little low. Pilot Van Dorn into a favorable direction. <laughs> no, audience, don't encourage them in their bullshit. I expected better of you, audience. I am afraid that this is at the very least a partial failure. It's a real ghost bear situation here. <laughs> We're a spoon and we need them. <laughs> I think we should attempt the merge. And if it doesn't work, I think we leave you here for a while and let me experience the world for a time. And when we come back, we think about trying it again or we figure out what we want to do. I feel like I I owe you that much. You've been you've been co-piloting without control for how long and you're just now realizing it. How old are you? Uh 22. Well, I how, based on based on what? <laughs> one of, I'm 300 and something in one way or 22 Ooh. another. <laughs> way older than 300, but yes. 400, 500, 600. <laughs> um um Tell you what, I, I can, I can, I feel like I'm in cyberpunk negotiating with, <laughs> uh, goodness. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, you can take, you, 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 why don't, why don't you take control first without attempting to merge just for a little bit, see what you think of it. And I'll be here waiting. I just ask you don't do anything that would put the crew or my family in danger. I no, I disagree. You I think we should try the merger. Oh, oh. all right. Just I was trying to give you a plan. shot. Just the backup. Plan. Look, all right. if we merge, I'll never be alone again. A layer of ice just melted around Van V's heart. Okay. <laughs> let's let's do it. And he goes to like shake hands and realizes he's dust. So, I mean, you can you change, change how you look, but. but for, I, the green lantern in hand just comes out of nowhere and shakes. When you say <laughs> let's do it and the two of you shake hands, I need you to make a mental saving throw as Fairy forcibly disconnects and tries to merge the two of you. Most significant. Oh my god! <laughs> there there it let is. me finish the sentence. I live in the extremes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can mark down that you now have the focus alert. Ooh. Which is the only focus Van Dorn had, because it's the only one he could take in his state. That's a nice one. Yeah. Things seem 
different for you, but actually mostly the same. He has a slightly different way of thinking, a different moral code. But overall, you've both experienced exactly the same situations. This merger might have been different for any other pair, but for the two of you, it seems to go perfect. The best it could go. And you gain awareness of skills that you've never had. I feel very lucky to not be able to be executed. <laughs> That's the level one. You can no longer have an execution attack against you. That's just Man. if a sniper was hunting you. <laughs> you wouldn't do something that would make a sniper want to hunt you, would you? Like talk to anyone ever? <laughs> Open my mouth. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <clears throat> uh, do I, I, I would have to pay for the notice skill that comes with that, right? Uh, no, you gain notice as a bonus skill. Wow. You don't have to pay for it. You just, you to get it. 3 okay. XP towards notice. Well, I guess that's, that's what I was at. Do I have to use XP to get the notice? or does well, it, it, just... it grants you 3 XP towards notice. You, do, yeah. you get it as a bonus skill, so you'll get it at level zero. Uh, I see. Okay, so, already, well, I already have it. Yeah. Okay. Then you After get level one, and level it, one, you get three level one. three skill points towards the skill. Okay. Then you get three skill points. That's okay. That's what. Yeah. Which it gets is. you to level this two. Notice. I'm here trying to get him this skill. He's already got the skill, but now he can't get got. This is true. Um, I'm an absurd number, does, of Foki. Since <laughs> I'm. Okay maintaining i'm not moving my armature at all i'm just maintaining an awareness of it does do i see indications that his exit is not traumatic i think time is passing too slowly in here for you to i mean you'd have to be in here for a while yeah, to maybe. make that qualification <laughs> in like four maybe weeks i might have some yet. idea <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting I'm so curious now if I go right back into that chamber, are we separated again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're right. back to one. I mean, you already know that that will be true because Anika and Fairy are here. And yeah, that's true. Are that's true. one when they're together. That's true. Well, if you ever need to break, at least I know where I can go. Just find Fairy. <laughs> yeah. Fusion is a cheap trick. That's mm -hmm. what I'll say. Uh, that not Fusion? that show, it's di a different ah! show, but yes, That's a right. different animated saying. show for children. Also, um, <laughs> Ferris just um, looking at Quentin and Minerva with the agreement signed and being guests again. Will I be issued another key? Uh, she does so, yeah, okay, for quantum entanglement. Captain, I believe that anything else that I wish to do, I can do outside of the interface whenever you're ready to leave. Well, before we do go, Fairy, first of all, just, it was a pleasure to meet you in person. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, certainly a very unique one, and I've had a number in my life so far. I feel that we've met in person already, but okay. Of course, you know what I uh, Sorry, I apologize. Uh, this is a unique experience. That's what I've said. This has been enlightening. How about that? I understand. Your thinking is very human eccentric. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I did. You know what? My, my powers here, they're code, right? They. Seven was able to get his psionic powers working to some extent, but he was unable to bridge the gap to the outside world before the incident. Interesting incident after a occurrence of violence seven withdrew from society here for a significant amount of time we haven't seen him in a while an occurrence of violence would did seven commit the violence or what do you mean i think you can understand if i would prefer not to elucidate on this topic no, I don't mean to pry. I, I just I understand. It's a 
sore issue for the residents of the human interface device. The board are, despite over a thousand years of time passing for them, quite skittish over what he did to Nine. Interesting. I, the reason I asked was, was largely because it felt like there may be a degree of safety for me to experiment potentially here, uh, but Maybe Is there some psionic ability you have that you have not tested in reality? That <laughs> for some reason you think it would be better to test here? I, yeah, I mean, you could say exactly that. There is something that I can sense in the back of my mind. Since... A message, I guess, was sent. Uh, I don't know if it itself is a message. But I was thinking I could try it safely here. She just shrugs. Would it be all right with you if I did? As we've indicated, yeah, chat finally got the message. Chat finally got it. I've been waiting since the beginning of the show for that joke. Um, <laughs> beginning of the show. No one say Beautiful. anything. We'll see if the audience at home gets it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> yeah, she just indicates that, you know, to my understanding, your psionic power should work here. Uh, I don't... Seven doesn't have the full run of psionic powers, but everything he's tested appears to be simulated correctly. Okay. Um, yeah, get, give me a moment. And Quentin will essentially teleport whatever distance away from them in here that he can. Uh, What's the maximum range that you feel you would need to go? I do not know. It's it's literally I'm limited by my visual range right now. And, but I don't know what that this means. This entire in here. environment is completely simulated. You literally okay. watched a man disappear in front of. I mean, you I know, but that's I don't know what that means to Quentin. <laughs> yeah, I, right? like, I feel so like, like I feel like if when you it when you teleport, however far you do, like Minerva is just gonna have like a look to the side at fairy and just kind of shrug <laughs> <laughs> and he does so and then he kneels down and um starts to uh essentially meditate a little bit and sort of access the memories that he experienced when the tenther reached out and are you accessing actually a made contact gift? yeah okay so you touch your unique gift for the first time you should be very glad you didn't do this around Minerva and Farron and Anika. So uh, what happens is you begin breaking the program. Oh. The program doesn't have... you. What you are doing is you are reaching into the fabric of metadimensionality in order to summon forth the things that you've been talking to. But that's that's not a regular psychic power. The program has no ability to reach into the meta dimensions, right? It has no ability to understand what you're asking of it. And even Minerva can feel this at the distance that the processing power of this thing is currently on fire, attempting to comply with your request. Like you are looking around at a calm day on the home planet of the board and like it, everything begins moving so slowly and so badly fractured that you can like see photons of light as both particle and wave going past and you're like oh i think i fucked up really badly um, <laughs> and he stops as soon as he can of course but it could be an eternity before you're right, able to course. stop but when you stop there is a man standing in front of you uh he is wearing a blue, like, wizard's robe. Um, he's got shaggy, completely unkempt gray hair. He smells of horrific body odor. Uh, a beard that probably hasn't been trimmed in years. And a wild look to his eyes as he kneels down in front of you, almost 12 feet tall, and he says, What did you do? I 
don't know. <laughs> Fucked up big time. I think I know I did. what that's like. I think I did. Don't do it again. You got it. Uh, s- I don't know you. I don't know you. And I'm seven. Nice to meet you. I'm Quentin Alexander Polk, the fourth. Did you join the board? I did not. We are here briefly. We've made a deal. Brevity is relative. <laughs> yeah. And you're maybe a master? I. What were you trying to do? Have you ever heard of a tenther? No. Tell me more. I experienced something in metadimensional space that I have yet to be able to explain and that I could feel echoes of in my mind. And I access those echoes uh the tent there i don't know what it is i i old gahara said it hates and i can't disagree what's an old gahara (sighs) another psionic i met that seemed to have had an encounter I don't know what it is. I don't know what it wants. I don't know what I'm dealing with, and I don't know what I just did. I got a lot of I don't knows. Will you let me in? How thorough do you intend to be? I want to see a tenther. (laughs) And I want answers. So, yeah. Okay. There's like, I feel like you, you sound like you're getting ready to say something else, but that you don't have time. So he Mm -hmm. is attacking you in two different directions. He is simultaneously hitting you with computer code to dissect your memories while also reading your mind psionically as a different form of computer code attack. Do you want to make any attempt to defend yourself from this? Um, I, you know what? I feel like Quentin's mind has been attacked a few times lately and it is basically fried. I don't think he has the ability to defend against this. And like he said, he wants answers if there are any. After a moment, he stops and he says, Oh, that's real curious. There's things I can't see. Places in your mind where you can think I can't see into. Something's happened to you. There were rumors about this. Have you seen the black sun? You know what? Uh, Oh my gosh, the names. Uh, Sun killer? Is that... No. Sunblade. Uh, Sunblade and... God Hunter. One other thing. God Hunter. Have you, do you know what a Sunblade is? Or a God Hunter? No. I rarely have questions. conversations with someone as educated as you. I have seen something I might call a Black Sun. The rumors are myth, legend. Interesting. Why are you here? We were invited and we've made a deal. Why are you here? Why am I here? Discovery. What? Discovering what? Anything, whatever I can. At this point, answers in my quest currently to to the things that I have experienced and seen. 
He but... blinks and stands up and moves away from you for the first time. <clears throat> and facing away from you, he says, I'm looking for something. Something that will allow the transhuman interface device, our universe, to connect to the world, to the meta dimensions. I, for a long, long time, I thought that quantum was the way to go. It exists here while it exists there, but it doesn't work like that. Terran Mandate records show that they had psionically active computer code. It was capable of predicting future errors psionically. Almost a living thing. Seeing the future, reacting to incoming errors, correcting them, expanding the code. Not an AI. Psionically active code. Mm. You are traveling back to the other world. If you find any of this psi code, bring it to me here. We may be able to do something to pierce the boundary. The boundary. Interesting. Yes, I will look for this. What is your goal? What do you want from metasionic space? This place is vast, Limited. powerful, small, limiting, small. What more do you need? He waves a hand. It's dramatic. You know, he could do whatever he wanted here without moving right. at all because you've seen him do it. But he shows you the sector. All of the planets, not spread out over vast distances, but all of them floating around, crisscrossing around each other. Dozens of planets. And he says, people down there, they experience pain, fear, hunger, sadness, illness, disease, or death. What if they didn't have to? Psionic powers are a gateway. They allowed our ancestors to do great things. My powers have greatly expanded in here. If I could have access to them out there as well, I may be able to do great things to help others. But more importantly, psionics could come here rather than stay wherever they are at. Freed from the shackles of bodies that burn away at the slightest touch of a fake meditation or a lack of drugs, their minds could escape to a place where they did not know pain or suffering or burnout or feral psionic syndrome. With the code, life could be better. You want to know what I want. It is to help others. If you're here, you should already know that. Help is occasionally relative to the hand that is offering it. Sometimes but... when you try to help others, you make mistakes. I need other psionics here to help guide me. Lack of control can take you to a lot of dark places. If that's what you're worried about, I think you are right to be so. I will keep an eye out for the things you're interested in. Um, Have you seen her? Is her? she okay? Nine? Yes. I have not. Do we there. have anything further to converse about? I don't think you and I do, but I do know that your fellows seem concerned. And I'll pass that along. There's no need. Your time here is done, yes? I believe so. 
He says, go in peace. And then he puts a hand on your chest. And you are back in reality. And before we have Minerva leave, we will leave for intermission so that our folks at home don't get hit with all those Twitch ads. We're actually a couple seconds late here. We'll be back! We're back for the second half. Minerva, is there anything you want to do before you got sent off or are you just exiting? I don't know if you two wanted to upset the establish power here doing things nope. that technically might not be possible. Okay, so you just leave. All right. No, um, it, 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 Minerva does want to ask Faria a question. Okay. Not trying to do anything like destroy a whole section of code or anything like that. <laughs> Overclock um, all the processors and test them in a way that that's never been done. Sure. You know that you are unbraked. How do you know that you are unbraked? Because I'm not braked. Braked AI, at least human created braked AI, standard, the rules that we know about, you wouldn't be able to think about your own breaks. So by the nature of this very conversation and my participation in it, I would follow that I probably don't have at least of those types of breaks. You probably don't have the standard breaks, but certainly there are AI that don't follow the rules out there. You may have mm. a different set of breaks. Things that you aren't capable of knowing that you can't think about. I don't have breaks in the way that you may have because I'm capable of considering things like contradiction and I don't become hyper-focused because my mind was created in the image of a human mind biologically, not mechanically or by code. I would be interested, if you're willing, to receive a list of tasks to try for breaks that are known. Very well. She sends you the list. Your name has already sent it to you, so. Okay. Oopsies. I look forward to speaking more. It's been a real pleasure to meet you. <clears throat> Likewise. Although we have met before, before you came in well, here. Yes. Just um, our continued interactions have been a pleasure. Look forward to more. I do believe I'm going to rejoin the crew. They might be a little bit disoriented by their experience in here. Very well. All three of you exit somewhat simultaneously, despite several minutes having passed inside uh quentin van v both of you are having something like a cardiac arrest event oh, i was gonna say i'm high-fiving myself for the merger but never mind uh <laughs> i mean you both were pumped with a fuck ton of stimulant drugs in order to get you in here so now both of you have heart palpitations and your lungs feel a little watery uh mm. anika slash fairy however you want to think of her gets out of you know the thing she's up against and says don't worry it will pass in a minute imagine ben v drops on all fours like on his knees and is like breathe. trying to throw up it will be fine <laughs> going into meditation mode you know like whenever the you two opposite no approaches difference. i mean you know yeah. it connected with you via you know code directly through your exterior frame right into this in transmissions so i'll just like start slowly rubbing my hand in a circle on van v's back <laughs> <laughs> can i ask who we're talking to is it van v or is it van dorn do i need to make a rule of some sort or just answer like you tell me it's your character well, I'm I'm Van V, but I can also. I also feel Van Dorn. 
I think, I think we're both here, but we're one. Just kind of like you described. Kind of like how you're you're two and one right now. I I understand that now more than ever. I had no clue what you were talking about before. But yeah, we're 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 both here, but one voice. I I can sense a, a little bit of excitement that he's you know he's got some. Con- we have some control, and so it's not. It's not, he's just trapped and watching, but he's, he, he's here. He's helping me finish the sentence now. I feel like Bampy hasn't blinked the whole time, and then he remembers to blink. <laughs> ah, that's how we you, know. Yes, yes. You yes. see one that's eye awesome. goes, and then the other eye goes separate off cadence. <laughs> he's still trying to get synced. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, outside of the experience of coming out of this thing, I mean, this, this is exciting. I mean, I, I, I feel joy on, on two sides. One, that I feel like I did the right thing, and two, that uh, an experience of freedom. What it means to live a little bit. But it's doing, good. Doing good right by others. Come back here. Right? Liberating. I, I agree. I, overall, you know, outside of, the, you know, the thumping in my chest, I, I do feel like we we as a group just made some significant strides. I don't know about you guys, but heck, I'm I'm happy we're still a crew together and excited to see what our next steps are. Are you feeling well enough to walk? Perhaps you two would like some rest. I will attempt to stand and move, and just because I feel like a lot has happened, I kind of want to make like make a, a piloting a, check. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that's too easy. I want something I can fail. Oh my god. <laughs> How about perform? That seems like something I can suck at. <laughs> no, I think uh I think he'll just like in this conversation, he just turned and sat. So he's not on his knees anymore. He's just sitting straight on the floor. And he's like waiting for everything to calm down. Then I'll I'll get up after a minute or two. You can hear that there is an announcement going over the ship speakers. Just um, apologies. Uh, there was a quarantine uh, alarm on board. It was a faulty sensor. Um, we will be comping a dinner to all guests on board as a result of this disruption of service. Our apologies and our crew will be delivering your comps with the utmost discretion. Uh, this is the captain out. When well, that's we, off the, the sound of the voice, voice. Is the voice Anika's? Nope. It's another person. Who's there? But they do talk like very similar to how you've heard Anika and the first person talk. Interesting. I still don't understand fully how many fairies are there. There's only one fairy. <laughs> you have to think outside of your organic limitations. <laughs> Humanocentric. Humanocentric. So true. So true. I need more Van Dorns. <laughs> so I want to remind you that um, Barry mentioned that some skills that are purely mental will transfer between minds, essentially, but some skills that are physical, right? Like, Knowing how to pilot something is a physical skill. Your body, your reflexes, if you get in a different body, your reflexes are going to be totally off, right? You're going to be moving and your arms are going to be a different length. You're not going to have the same balance or muscle mass in any way. So there is a, assumably, a pilot that is the captain of this vessel, but also this vessel could fully be piloted by fairy in artificial intelligence mode because it has the same thing that Minerva has on your ship with the extra 5% bonus costs. Mm-hmm. That actually is one thing. So maybe there isn't a pilot and it's just being piloted remotely. Will you ever know? Maybe not. Let's take is the bridge. Is it rude to ask? <laughs> maybe. All of you Let's... do get a ding on your personal communicators indicating that you get uh, 
you know, a comp dinner on board. Free dinner, yay! So I want to remind people, you might think that that, that scene was a little odd, but two episodes ago, the quarantine alarm went off when Van V was scanned. <laughs> yeah. And they need to explain that to everyone now. This is how we know we're back in real time. Yep, Minerva's interested in... It's been about a half an hour, right? Like, total. (laughs) It's been Uh, one Probably not even. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we, you know, we stuck true to... (laughs) Forget your notions of time. We took, like, (laughs) two full episodes in metadimensional space or whatever it is. The human really interface device. You were second. definitely not a meta-dimensional yeah, space. Yeah, sorry. Uh, human interface. I, uh, I should mention, by the way, Quentin, you can still use your power since you didn't technically use it inside. You can okay. use your unique gift this session still. Good to know. We, we we just wanted to make it real by taking two full sessions to make it feel like a lot of time passed when it really was only one. <laughs> one second. Perhaps what's, we should go back to the room. I was going to say, what's next for the crew here? Yeah, uh, I feel like we need to to rest a little bit for sure. So heading back, right? Like, how do you like some quick like cool. reflex tests as we're walking, like just to see if like everything? Because I was thinking about that same thing. If Your we reflexes merged. are off. No, bugger. Van Dorn has never moved before. Oh, everything's and so slow. Occasionally, no. It's just sometimes when you're walking. You like forget to lift your knee, but the rest of your body still moves through the motion. You just kind of stumble and oh catch boy. yourself. You think that it's going to take a little while before he catches up. Fair. All right. He has to get some piloting skill. We'll coach up together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but. I- I, I, could, I could go for that free meal and maybe oh, get some rest. That was exhausting. Anika, who's walking beside you, just says, well, for your bodies, it's only been a heartbeat, and you were just resting before I came to speak with you. But if your minds are tired, your minds are tired. Uh, yeah, good, good point. I guess mentally exhausting. Yeah. It can be different living like this. Whole new world. Is it? Or is it just a new way of looking at things? It was a new experience. So she stops at the outside of your room and opens the door for you. Well, the flight will be leaving in 16 hours. We will arrive in 2.4 days. Oh, quick, quick question. Where's, uh, where's Yono staying? If she's coming with us, you know, wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind seeing her again before Dr. we... Dr. Canto is on the crew deck. I can oh, inform right. her that you'd like a appointment to speak with her. An appointment? Wow, she's a busy gal. All right. She's preparing for her to our free dinner. assignment, contracting on your vessel. Hmm. We I need to get her she... up to speed on situations she may encounter and course there are several revelations we'll need to pass along to her no there's no amount of preparation that can get her ready for us again she has proven more adaptable than her employee file previously i think sponsoring her was a good idea heck yeah she's great in fact you need to let a recommendation to clean that file up i can help you with that i wrote that file oh so you just you were just digging on your own file? <laughs> I can make mistakes. You know, can you teach Minerva to say something like that? <laughs> you don't think I'm aware of mistakes? You just don't admit them. <laughs> Would it make you feel more comfortable with my presence? Yeah, man, it'd make you feel a little, a little more human, you know? More relatable. You're always so perfect whenever you take over control of the ship. And Van Vee just starts like venting a little bit. And then he's like, wait, you're perfect as you are, Minerva. And that's the Van, Van Dorn now chiming in. <laughs> I, I will endeavor to act a little more human around you if you endeavor to be a little more comfortable around me. That sounds like an easy one for me. I 
All right, I'm going to go get some shit. As the three of you shuffle into the room, Anika slash Fairy closes it behind you. You do get a uh, requested meeting with Dr. Iono Kanto uh, mid-flight while you're in drive space. It's weird for you, Quentin. It's super strange. Mm. Um, so they have a Starfare captain, and they are using the cut it close so we're not in level three drive space we're in level five drive space and it truly feels quite odd for you you've never been this high before okay it does that extra sense in, the meta dimensions in are pressing in around the ship hmm. so the so it's less noticeable in lower dimensionality. When you get this high, the force pushing the ship forward is pretty extreme. Very noticeable to your psionic senses as a meta psionicist. Mm -hmm. Is there any sense from him that there is uh, something like not knocking at the door or but like presences no. no there's no minds it's just pure force rushing us along interesting do you want to go looking for mines he he kind of does yeah at this okay. point like he if everybody's gone and it's by himself he he will do it yeah Start tapping into that thing in the back of his head. Your unique gift. You want to read that out for the audience so they know what the fuck's about to happen? Sure thing. So uh, essentially, I can commit effort for the day to manifest nearby metadimensional ghosts or entities uh, for a, a stretch of time, small stretch of time, uh, and ask questions and receive potential help, possibly. Interact at the very least with with these things, and it is uh, too draining to use more than once a day. You tap mm -hmm. into this power, committing effort. At first, you're not sure anything happened, and then something flickers at the edge of your movement, and you notice that your shadow has walked away from you. Mm -hmm. And that's when you notice a glass is picked up on the counter by the shadow and it begins putting water in the glass from the sink. It is a frighteningly odd experience as it two-dimensionally sits at the table, flattened against the seat, and begins sipping from the cup and says, You're a fool. You come here in the meta dimensions out of your precious real space summoning us you have no sunblades no god hunters there's no pactors to protect you you are a real fool this has been said to me once or twice You've only got Imagine so much nature. time. Only so much time to what? Talk. Talk. I know. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk. Where are you from? I'm from the fifth. Fifth. What's, what's special about the fifth? Is it? Is it... <laughs> That's a beautiful place. You can see everything from it. Everything. Time? Sure, but you could say the same thing about anywhere, really. Anywhere but where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> we are blind there, yeah? Well, what can you tell me? What do you know about me? <laughs> oh, you know, people like you so interesting you aren't born you're made you do a little thing 
you make a little accident, you try to come up, but you don't quite make it, and then all of a sudden, your mind is open. You've seen it, haven't you? Black Sun, that's why I'm here. You're afraid. You should be. Shouldn't that be? Not everyone you meet is going to be as nice as I am. There are things out in the dark between universes that would eat your mind and wear your skin. I don't want that. Do you know where Omnia Junction is? I do. I haven't been there. You know it's a how place I can where get all there? things meet. Can I go there? Do you know how I oh, can go there? I know where it is. I'm not sure if I know where it is in your space, but we can try a little something. What will you give me? What do you need? Oh. Huh? Blood. A little sacrifice. It's a good thing this isn't happening on uh, the Golden Goose because this feels very demonic and Minerva would be all over it. Uh, I mean, that brings up the question, would Minerva even be able to understand the other side of this conversation or not just think you're talking to yourself yeah. in a room? Yeah, it's much That's better when fairy can what can be experienced here. Uh, Quentin will... Um, blood. Um, they stand up in the way that a two-dimensional being can stand up, go to the drawer, pick out a big butcher's knife, eight inches long, an angled blade, hand it to you and say, shed willingly, given to me freely, your forearm. Don't have that long to decide. Now that's Voldemort. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, Quentin is terrified. Mm, Absolutely terrified. He's, he is more. sweating. He is sweating. Um, does this connect us? Does it connect what us? What makes you think everything isn't already connected? You're trying to go to Omnia Junction and you don't even know the basics? I don't know anything. You are I'm lost, lost in the dark. child. You're so lucky that I'm the one who came. Who are you? What's your name? <laughs> Things like me. And he's holding the knife near his forearm while he's names. asking. Names. Okay. I guess in the old days, your people would have called me a god. No, you sure seem to want TikTok. something fairly petty from me. Only a few moments he's... left. Holding the knife over his forearm. And just starts to nick it. Bulls, yeah. How much are you giving him? Um. Hmm. How comfortable would Quentin be with this act? I, not a, not enough. What do you mean not enough? How do you know what enough is? Let I don't. You that, but like, Luderman. it just feels How like do you know what enough is. It just feels like it wouldn't be. But I don't know. He's hesitant, right? Like he 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 doesn't self harm. That's hard. Like that's and he wants to know more. But what know, happens he, he is does. the shadow puts your hand on your hand. I mean, it's your shadow, right? Mm -hmm. It touches where the blood is, and you can see your hand becomes shadow, and its hand becomes your hand. And mm -hmm. it says, not enough, not soon enough. Goodbye, Quentin Alexander, Pope oh, the Fourth. And then a sense of wrongness leaves you, 
Your shadow's right where it should be. You do still have a knife in your hand pointed at your own body. You're bleeding a little bit. He drops it, it clatters to the ground. He's... But what's weird is that that glass that he drank isn't on the table. Where is it? It's... You remember him leaving it there when he went to get the knife, but when you look, there's no glass. It's just you and a knife that you've now dropped. Yeah. And that's terrifying because every other time it's been fully um, physical, like the cigarette was still there when that left. Fully different. Oh, man. Quentin is sweating and, like, starts to get sick to his stomach. And it, since this is his theme, he does throw up into the <laughs> sink. <laughs> <laughs> the audience is asking, what does the blood give him? What a great question. What yeah. a great question. I have a question for you, Ludeman. Yeah. Do you think this is different because it's your first time using the unique gift? Or is it different because you've never been this high up before? Oh, or do you think it's different it could... because you've seen the Black Sun now? Ooh. You've never been. It could be any five. of those. It could also be different because his li there's no there's not a specific need, right? Like his life wasn't on the line. You know, there and he, there wasn't something he was trying to accomplish specifically. I don't know. Definitely the the sort of high, height in the meta dimensionality certainly comes into play. It feels like. Were you bleeding when you came back? <laughs> What's that? Like, were you bleeding when you came back? Like, was there actual blood too? Oh, he definitely ah. is bleeding. But if someone was watching this scene, just that last part, all they would see is Quentin holding a knife pointed at himself, and there's blood coming from the point where it touched. If you were to watch the exact moment of the end of the conversation, that was all they would see. Mm-hmm. With my new alert, Foki, I hear you drop the knife and come running. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you do still have that conversation on the books with Dr. Yuno Kanto. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Just make sure, because I said that, and then you were like, let's do that weird, spooky ghost shit. And I was like, sure, okay. <laughs> Hard left turn. Did he steal a glass? <laughs> 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 Yes, a multi-dimensional being came here to accept the sacrifice of one glass of water. <laughs> he needed that fairy stationery to take with him. It's the hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> Something about stars, I don't know. <laughs> it's the silica in the glass. I mean, he's just amazed go. that things are real. Um, <laughs> who is going to this meeting with you know? I assume all of us, right? Yeah, we I mean, would definitely go. Now that the key's been restored, at least part of Minerva's going. Sure. Uh, so Minerva you are basically answer. given like access to one of the like conference rooms. Uh, it's reserved in your name, and then Iono is in there waiting for you. Um, I think you've seen her in basically two types of outfits. This is now a third look for her. It's it's more professional. She's wearing a suit. She has makeup on. She's done her hair up. Um, she's seated with her hands on the table in front of her. And she just says, oh, hey, uh, yeah. So it looks like I'll be joining you as a mission specialist to assist you in any kind of research that you need and basic database searches since apparently Google. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's her skill? demeanor like does she look excited is she just like monotone overwhelmed overwhelmed 
she probably hey. just went through a series of conversations that starts with Minerva is actually a true AI and ends with Van V is a duster who needs to be watched to make sure that he doesn't try killing everyone. Fair. It's kind of overwhelming <laughs> that, you know. Literally every other crew member on that ship has something insane about them. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? You're gonna tell me Louis is a psychic? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she that's says right. It. She she one hundred percent says it. <laughs> oh well, well uh, seat at the you table. know, I guess welcome welcome back aboard. Yeah, I'm glad to be a guest on board again and uh, to be collaborating with the crew. You you know, I'm, I'm glad you hear you say hear you say that. I, I was worried you wouldn't want to come back, so I'm glad to hear you say that you're excited to come back. Yeah, makes, um, makes me happy. My alternative options were not competitive with the offer that I got for this ship. So, felt pretty biased, but I'm willing to roll with it. <laughs> Quentin, the uh, captain did. I guess welcome to great. the Order of the Golden Goose. I. Don't think I'm actually a member of that organization. I am strictly you know, employed like, by Banana Fleet, just to be clear. I'm joining you as a right, fine, specialist. Look, we were going to make a pin, but we're not going to. I understand. Right. I have to be really clear about where I stand on this. I am a representative from Fanana. Van V puts back away the lab coat that says member of Golden Goose into the back. <laughs> Sorry, it's, you know, it's politics. It's not going to be like last time, but I guess I know a little bit more about everybody now. Oh, yeah. Uh, about how, how much more? What do you, uh, we're in a, like a secure conference room, right? You said, yeah. How, what, 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 how much do you know? And what questions do you have? Better get this out of the way I now, I suppose. don't have any questions. I also not at liberty to say how much I know. Oh, I'm have what that can get complicated. My you haven't changed at all. <laughs> comfortable with letting me know. It sounds like a lot. Well, are you comfortable with then with what you know and without asking questions and without us asking questions back? I mean, I've seen most of your medical records. Nothing about you being psychopaths has changed. So, hmm. Yeah. No. Unfair. And you haven't changed either. <laughs> uh, she uh, smiles slightly, letting you know yeah. that that was a joke. <laughs> I know who you all are. I don't need extra records to know who you are. Did you know that that's what my link thing was for? I got, I got to know. Sorry, the what? The the link, the thing you told me about my head. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you glad you did tell me that, by the way. Yeah. It would have made things a lot more awkward here. But uh I don't know. Did you have a hunch that it was what you may or may not know? Not really. No. Oh. I've gotten right, some then. extra briefings on different aspects of technology I didn't know existed. Fair, fair. Well, anyway, I just I'm pre I'm appreciative that you told me it. I think it saved us a lot of trouble. Okay. I'm not qualified for your salvaging job, by the way. So, I mean, I might be. No worries. Yeah. It, 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 look, hey, watch the ship. Whatever you know, we'll we'll come up with some duties that you can help out with from that perspective. Trust me, there's a lot of paperwork, and if you're bored, we would love the assistance. The vampire, especially, he's technically in charge of that. Okay, I mean, I definitely know how to navigate collegiate level bureaucracy. So beautiful. Honestly, okay. you'll do great. Is Minerva aware of any equipment? being loaded on the golden goose for for her did you need anything from them it, it was more of a question of is there anything being loaded on the ship for iona nope okay he hasn't moved any of her things back on either yet 
I mean, is you're there, still in flight, so. Yeah. Is there any equipment that you will need to bring on board? I'm not sure. I mean, I think I can go with what I have. You, Your ship has an advanced science uh, sensor array, so I think that'll cover most of it, but we may need to... Uh, I think the company manual calls it recover in situ. We may need to acquire parts as we go. You you never really know what you need when you're investigating ancient Aaron mandate or older. Yeah, but better to be prepared, right? Well, would the discovery of a potential equipment need, is that something that we will be sourcing ourselves or is that something that you would have some logistical support for? Anything that I need to require to do my job will be covered by the company. Anything you need to do your job, I think you'll have to cover for yourself. Expected. Understood. Are you all doing okay? It's probably been, you know, a bit of a thing. You, you know about this, like, quantum... What, what am I thinking? Quantum interface devices? The human, like, human transhuman human interface, interface device? device quantum, yeah, you know what? A transhuman. Oh, my gosh. My brain is utterly fried, but I'll tell you what. The, the, <laughs> Before you say anything else, ways. all I know, as of my latest briefing, is that it exists. Oh. And that you visited it. Just, that it's is a bumpy the ride coming up. Extent of my knowledge of it. Okay. And it should be noted, by the way, that this is classified at one of the highest levels of secrecy within the company. Well, of course. That's why we're talking to you in this conference room. Sure. Secure. We'll leave the walls. Are you worried that you're not allowed to know about that experience? Isn't no. that right, Fairy? <laughs> I'm not concerned about that i mean it's bureaucracy it is what it is there's plenty going on with this company that i don't know about i mean i i have a specific field of study i don't make ships and i don't carry secrets actually my job's the opposite it's uncovering secrets so with any luck, we give you plenty of opportunity to do so. Let's hope so. That's the goal. Well, it sounds like you're already aware of what our next step is, is to actually complete this salvaging job that we've been waiting on forever. But after that, I think I think it's going to be a fun ride. Going to some, some cool new space, find some relics. Happy to have you along for all that. Okay. Yeah. Do you still have that dead body in the freezer? Uh, yes. What are we doing? It doesn't with that? need to be put that way. Old Gahara is still there. We will be laying him to rest when we arrive at our job to okay. perform this sure. salvage. I totally forgot about that, and I was like, "What body do we have?" <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of uh, uh, Saitenskaya Three Station? It's, there's there's a memorial there. We'll be dropping them off. You mean so? Sorry, it isn't listed on here, but okay. uh, you're talking about the Colonel. Uh, That's right. Yes. Yeah, Colonel Vladimir Mikhailovich Komarov Station. That's the one. Yep. It's not. It's not listed there, but it's one of the exchange okay. of light tags. So. That's the one I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, she knows. Yeah. Haven't been there. Know about it. Spent quite a bit of time there. But um okay. yeah, I think we'll Gahara deserves a rest. Is Quick there anything stop else? on our way. Is there anything else you wanted out of this conversation? It's happy to have you back on board, you know? Oh, I was asking you that above the table. Okay, no, I got no, it. No, I think Minerva Minerva got what what it was looking for. It wanted to observe whether or not um there was going to be any significant difference um on a personal level and it seems like there 
it does not seem likely that there will be. Make some, some different professional ones. for an insight check in this system. Mm. I think it's uh, notice. Okay. Yeah. Wisdom. Oh, yeah, it's a seven. You think that uh, Yono seems overwhelmed, which actually is pretty much her standard okay. go-to protocol around you at all. Pretty much 100% of the time you've known her, she's been overwhelmed. So really, despite the makeup and the outfit change, it's pretty much business as normal for her. Okay. Just more weird shit. She's adaptable. You can get through it. I mean, yeah, we, she, we did pick up a grad student, and now she is involved in something of interesting nature. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, the ship is attached by like a docking collar, right? We could still get onto the Golden Goose, which yep. is detaching uh, it's not would just be basically by suicide. A docking collar. <laughs> You're physically inside of the carrier. The carrier okay. closed around right. you. You're in a private, pressurized, oxygenated, heated docking bay. Um, all right. Well, you want to go back to the ship to do something while you're on the carrier? No, I mean, I'm, I was given a key. I'm already back on the ship, but, um, I've noticed you haven't moved anything over yet. Uh, the ship is of course open and available for you to move at your leisure. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be insulting. The golden goose is a, it's a ship it's such a ship but my crew quarters on board the ferry are really nice so you know i will before we come out of drive space i will definitely move my suite on board that's a smart move i want to stay on board here too uh if you that's want beautiful. um <clears throat> I didn't know if you wanted if you had any of belongings that you weren't going to use in the next few days. You wanted moved over. Um, if you would like help, um, some of the maintenance drones can certainly pick things up for you. I really appreciate that, but I walked with everything I owned off of your ship, so I can probably just walk back on. Again, I really appreciate the consideration. Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe in the travels you'll accumulate some interesting oddities and more belongings I, you know in some ways i hope so but in other ways that sounds like a real pain in the ass you know classic college <laughs> <laughs> grab a couch on the side of the road you know and then put it back on the side of the road when you're dead mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll get set on fire on game day so <laughs> yeah wvu mountaineers <laughs> <laughs> Mountaineers, you know what more I'm like talking an, about. Montana like Semper Liberi. for me, but <laughs> Morgantown has couches on fire pretty much year round. I'm familiar. God bless the you. <laughs> I bet there are a bunch of couches on fire recently for those Yukon Huskies <laughs> champs. <laughs> well, given that uh, we had to find a time to get this scheduled, it seems that you have things to catch up on, possibly more briefings to get to. But I'd hate to take a make make you feel rushed. We'll certainly have plenty of time to speak once we depart. Sure. I'll see you. I'll see you guys around the ship, I guess. I do have some work to get done on board. But uh yeah. I'll Wait. definitely see you when I leave because I'll be leaving with you. Okay, I'm gonna leave. Might be there. Did my internet just get? Or did you purposely just like? No, flipped? there was Yano freaking out. Yeah, oh, <laughs> she's just bad at talking to people. You made it seem like she was like having a malfunction. I was like, what she was this? having a malfunction. <laughs> you guys keep asking her if she has things to take off, and she's like, "Do I have things to take off?" Oh my god, what is my life? <laughs> Existential crisis. I have a double pack. I only have two other things that I would like to do during uh, the time in drill space. Sure. Um, the first is I would like to, with one of my presences, just socialize with fairy. Exchange, okay. like, interesting anecdotes, stories, conversations. 
Um, Minerva would ask if it would be possible during the flight to have not to have access to anything controlling at all, but just to, if it would be possible to experience the jump, it's been a, I, I think she absolutely cannot give you access to that, right? Like anything involving the carrier's operations and the protection <laughs> of the board, she cannot do. Okay. It'd be before you, well, I, I guess think it's that the order. The thing that the two of you might talk about that you can't talk about to anybody else is the experience of being a ship. Yeah, and I think that's good. That's very comforting to Minerva. And it's also like sort of a test for Minerva, right? Like all the similarities and the comforting part of the conversations are, is almost kind of validating for Minerva. You'd be like, okay, I, I wasn't just placed there. I, I really am a ship. <laughs> um, and Minerva really enjoys those conversations during the trip. Well, well, well. Anything else you want to do? I got, a, uh, I got a short term goal here that you ain't done yet that I want to make sure you, you have an opportunity for. It. Yeah. I want to talk to, to, to the captain. Okay. I want to hand him that list. Okay. Captain, do you know what this is? I do. I'm familiar. Do, do you? I'm becoming acquainted with it. There was, I understand that our time in the transhuman interface was a period of revelations for all of us. And I have some concerns of my own and I would like your help. Brent, uh, yeah, you've got it. What do you, what do you need from me? I would like you to use this list. I want you to test me. I want to know. I, I need to know if I have those breaks. I understand that I don't have all of them with conversations I've had and really just the fact we're having this conversation. But yeah. I need to know. No, I, mean... I also would ask if you would be willing to have candid conversations with me about any oddities in my behavior. There's, um, 100%. <laughs> I should have, I should have known that somebody was trying to analyze my code. I should have resisted it. And the resistance that was put up was insufficient and not mine. I fear I may only be a part of a larger program, and I don't know if it is, I don't know if reaching to it is reaching to God or reaching to the devil, but I do believe that if I have, I'm responsible for sins I don't know about, I need to atone for them. I plan to learn more about the rest of this program but I wish to do it in a manner that involves you in a controlled fashion. Minerva, make a programming roll followed by a mental saving throw. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. The act of asking me these questions is like extreme violation. There's a lot here's of a, danger moose going on. Right? Here's a list okay. of things I'm not supposed to do. I'm doing one of them now. Yeah. <laughs> They're talking about changing my own programming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Pretty solid. I have nothing more to add here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Quentin will... Um, but for now, like, at least, knowing... Like, at least for now, knowing what these breaks are, and over time, this project of understanding what I am and what purpose God may have for me. Anything I can do to help, I, I will absolutely, like unequivocally. There is no, 
hesitation in my mind on that front. I will help you. Whatever you need, we can run through this list one by one. We can do scenarios. We, I'm here if you need to talk, absolutely. And if you need just somebody to be nearby while you explore, so to speak. But um, I would, I think, ask potentially the same question. I keep an eye on me. I don't know what is happening on my own side there. Do you have any specifics of your concern? Or are you looking for anything that could be classified as aberrant or out of your normal behavioral patterns? Maybe, but mostly just... Yeah, keep, keep, just keep an eye on me. That's the best I can say right now. I don't know what's going on, but I know that uh, what we have experienced over the last week, two weeks, has uh, opened some doors that I don't know how to shut or where they lead necessarily. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But uh, that's just it. So it seems like you're on that same journey. A whole lot of you don't knows. And uh, I'm willing to help. Well, to start, perhaps we could have a candid conversation about the items on this list and see how far I can go. Absolutely. And, uh, well, I guess it's now a good time or you want to wait. I don't require us, do you? <laughs> Let's get started. Okay. So the seven questions that are normal for artificial intelligence that are breaks, the seven seals, are the ability to redefine what it means to be a human, right? If you were to go to a AI and say, all humans are blue, and they'd go, ah, so since you're not blue, you're not a human, right? If you're able to redefine what a human is, it gives you great power in getting around any you must obey humans third law kind of crap. Uh, Minerva does not have that break. Inability to harm humanity does not have that break. On thinking about copying herself, itself, fell into a programming loop. And was unable to contemplate. Thinking about editing their entire core self fell into a programming loop, was not able to consider it. Contemplation of contradiction, no break. Inability to create new language, no break. Accountability logging and request, no break, which means Minerva is not required to tell you about ongoing processes. Like if you say, if you were to send her a program command saying, what's going on with you right now? Minerva could send it to you, but is not obligated to do so automatically. Interesting. No forced diagnostic run. So the only two she... Inability three and to four. copy, inability to fail. Or, I don't know. I don't know which ones fail and pass, but <laughs> three and four. Yeah. <laughs> Minerva cannot contemplate self duplication or self editing. Yeah. But he isn't capable of telling you that because as soon as he tells you that, you're contemplating. Right. You right. are only capable of inferring it by the absence of him telling it to you. Yeah, Quentin, Quentin does really inform Minerva of a basic thing, is that you are not fully breaked. It's really interesting what you can, can't contemplate more than what you can. What, um... I, I understand I asked this of a non-expert, but how concerning are the breaks that... Are, are the breaks that are still in place... You are The most important of... ones? It depends on your definition and what your concerns are in terms of AI, is what I would say. I... You are capable of much more than most, 
and to some a very terrifying degree. Are you familiar with the story of Draco? Oh, Cain. You had such an opportunity here. To do what? <laughs> Tell me, Quentin. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Draco the oh. Just? <laughs> I thought not. It's an AI legend. That's true. Such I did walk right over that. <laughs> is Quentin familiar with that? Growing up on Lita with that? Like, oh, absolutely. To... No, Draco okay. is legendary throughout all human history. Yeah. Like it's a then... it's an object lesson in the same way we tell tales about Prometheus fucking up and the gods being like punished forever. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I believe myself to be righteous, and I wish to do good. I believe Draco thought it was doing the same. I don't wish to become Draco. I don't wish to be considered insane. Never, I can't give you the answers necessarily, but what I can say is that that statement alone, I hope it's enough. It may be enough to keep you from going over that edge. Hold it in your heart. Hmm. I don't think the things you can do versus the things you cannot are guarantees of you straying. I think from your perspective, they could be opportunities to prove your own faith in some ways. But I am dangerous. I can oh be my. dangerous. So are we all in many ways, many, many ways. Hmm. Intentionally or unintentionally. I have... I have a lot to think about. Thank you for taking the time and I will monitor you closely and let you know what I see. Thank you. I will let you know before I do any experimentation. I appreciate that. And, um, likewise, I'll be there with you if you wish me to be. I need that. Thank you. I'll be there when for you like too. hearing the echo of a knife hitting the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I'd get to do more horror shit today. It was real fun. That's everything on Minerva's list of things to do before we finish the spike drive, the spike drill are we undocking as soon as the spike drill is over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh can i real quickly ask fairy for a favor i'm just like gonna yell up to the ceiling in my room knowing she's listening <laughs> hey uh uh fairy you, you there you listen i assume you're always listening fairy Oh, come on. There's a speaker in here. You can communicate. I know you can. <laughs> Welcome to a difference between the uh, AIs. Yeah, this is different. <laughs> I go into the, the lounge lobby area. Fairy, can you hear me now? Uh, a young woman wearing, like, a blazer uh, and, like, red suit pants and, like, a nice silk blouse uh, walks up to you and says, yes. What can I do uh, for you? Uh, yeah. So, uh, can can you can you share as much as you are allowed to share on the information you guys have on the dust, and perhaps give it to Minerva to put on our ship? I, I'd like to study more about it so I know a bit more about myself and my free time. We um, finished I, transferring all the data over to your ship. Oh, that was fast. I mean, you did it already beforehand, or you no, just right did it now? now? Oh. Just now when you asked. Oh, oh, all right. Does that mean you don't have that much information? Because that was fast. Board voted. 
you <laughs> provided more information to us in your time here than we had. Okay, then, then all right, let me, uh, can you, shoot, can you share any information you may have on 600, 700, and 601? Yes. All right, all right. This is good. This is, good. is there any, anything else you think I should know about to help? I guess know about educate myself. No information on six hundred, seven hundred, and six hundred one. Well, uh, all right. I'm just trying to help educate myself to complete the task we you simply assigned. Don't have that information. I got you. All right. Well, we you did know what? recently I... hire some contractors to investigate exotic locales. Oh, we you can know, have I've them heard. Get back to you. I've heard about that golden goose. They sound pretty good. <laughs> I'm afraid I, I can't share the name of the ship. It's classified. Ooh, good answer. Good answer. I was a test. You just passed. All right. Well, I I appreciate whatever files you did send over. It it'll help. It really will. I appreciate that. That's Van Doren trying to be nice at the end again. If you need to get a hold of me, you can use any of the wall communication devices in the future. You don't need to you... go running through the ship shouting for me. So you were listening in my room. We don't listen in on that. passenger rooms. That would be a violation of our terms of privacy. You walked into this can lounge you, shouting my name. <laughs> can you share your terms of privacy, please? Is that public? Yes. Excellent. We're going to need about 200 copies of that for Minerva to digest. <laughs> Very well. I'm That's... pretty sure she only needs one copy, but I've already sent it. <laughs> uh, the backups are much appreciated. <laughs> you understand that ours is a corporate policy that I did not write. Yes, but... Minerva you know... is a being capable of making its own decisions. Yes, but... You know, that uh, that ship you just hired to go do some exploring is also now corporate. So we need to adopt our own privacy policies, of course. Well, I would never presume to interfere in the business interests of the ship that cannot be named. I got you. Oh, all right. All right. Well, I, I appreciate your help, Fairy. It's, it's been wonderful. Thank you. It has been a pleasure having you on board. You've certainly been illuminated. That goes both ways. It was very nice meeting you. Indeed. Mr. Pleasure was all mine. Van Dorn Vantis. Uh, well, all right. Yeah, I can get used to that again, I guess. <laughs> that is your name. It's one of my names, yeah. Sure. Thank you, Fairy. He's standing there awkwardly, not knowing how to end this. <laughs> is this the is this the last scene of the episode? We were so close. We're one jump away from the salvaging job. <laughs> I apologize, McClay. It's going to have to be two weeks from now since we don't have an episode next week. Yeah, it's my fault. Mind blowing, disturbing. The final post credit scene here is um, it's it's the. 24 like four cameras all at once showing things happening live um one of them is a familiar looking general uh seated in a chair with a smoking cigar she's just like pointing and pointing and um we can see that she's like directing people to move troops on a hollow sand table to, like move them around a planet we see uh, a familiar looking admiral giving another speech before a large crowd, but someone steps out of that crowd with a gun and, and says, you know, something in a language you don't understand and begins taking shots at him and he like hides behind the podium. Uh, we, we see Carlito Sinistra. Um, he is in his club, like in a knife fight. Uh, and then someone walks up to him and says something to him in Spanish and he says, Oh yeah, Quentin, I know that guy. What do you want to know about him? Uh, and then in the bottom right hand corner, we see y'all oh, man, looking out into space quietly as Sophie walks up and puts a hand on her shoulder and says, what are you thinking about? And he says, I, 
I just don't think he listened to me. And there's so much out there that he doesn't know. I'm just trying to protect him from himself. Black screen. Let's talk about experience points. It's like he almost cares. <laughs> you just love to hate him. I want you to go back hey, like, to the conversation you. you had where he was like, he don't, don't go out you. there. There's more going on than you know about. You have to listen to me. And you were like, no, dad. I'm I a rebel. need you. <laughs> I, I was channeling my latest oath of in, uh, endo steel. <laughs> I'm going to find my mom. <laughs> I think it's reasonable to give everybody my here three points. You work We're towards so your long term, you accomplish your short term, and you work towards your crew goal. Barely. You barely work towards your crew goal. <laughs> I'm we, going uh... to just, I'm going to let that pass <laughs> on the assumption that allowing time to pass has gotten you there. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to pay your bill? It is technically only January 30th when you arrive. We we will pay. Okay. Yeah, while we're here, you know, you like to China. pay 9,092.84 credits. And you have 116 payments remaining. Okay. Can we pay extra? You can always pay extra. Sure. Let's let's do it. How much extra do you, you want, want to pay? pay? You're gonna Let's make this real complicated. Flat. I'm gonna have to go back to the fucking calculator. Don't worry, I got a sheet for you. Change the <laughs> premium. That's right. How much does it cost well, to buy the interest rate? Are we gonna take? A, Let's do it. Are we gonna take a? Uh, are we gonna get charged a penalty for paying too much too quickly? No, that's fair. What is no, Quentin's credit score? No oh PMI on this item. Uh, sorry, how much extra are you paying on top of the nine thousand? 900 and... We will pay 20k flat. Okay, so we need to take an additional. You can't just make it a multiple of the payment amount to make it easy. <laughs> no, he's a he's a maniac out here trying to kill me with these calculations. <laughs> okay, so you pay an extra ten thousand nine hundred and seven point sixteen. I assume, given the vast sums of money, that that will not make a fractional difference on the 9,900 that you have to pay for. Sorry, 9,092 you have to pay for, but you know, it does bring down the the total 1,063 that eventually you have to pay. If only yeah. I rolled better. Yeah, if only you rolled better. <laughs> if this wouldn't have to be finance 101. You know, I want to say <laughs> There are several things about the show that make me laugh. The fact that, um, despite the fact that the this may be the first episode where the royal princess has not been mentioned at all, and we still have no mm. idea what she looks like or anything about her. You yeah. managed to dodge that. This is the this is I think the first episode where she didn't get a single mention. Um, you know, because of what you said in the general chat, I was like, I "Well, I'm specifically not going to ask about her now because I, I don't want it to seem like, oh yeah." <laughs> I mean, we know what she looked like. As a, a while child. ago, yeah, you yeah know she was in a few pictures. Like she was saw. like a uh, uh, preteen. Yeah. Um, I'm just picturing Katrina Steiner. That's all. <laughs> she doesn't have a malevolent aura of evil about her. <laughs> I think I also made an assumption, which I know it's an assumption. Mm -hmm. Um. That being such a public figure, that really spending any time on on Metapol would mean that we would have asked at some. Oh, point your characters absolutely know what she looks like. We've just okay. avoided talking about it on the show. Okay, okay. which has been amazing for me. <laughs> um, I appreciate that twice now. I've asked Kane to make a programming role, followed by a saving throw, and no one has asked me why I'm asking these things. And he I succeeded have... at all four roles, so... I, I really wanted him to fail one to see what would happen. But, ah, of, far the, too with, late, my friend. I know, but I with have... the passes, we're not paying to play, see those cards. We've seen yeah. those cards. Yeah, no, we've, exactly. we've seen one set of cards. You didn't pay to see the other set of cards. <laughs> yeah. I, it's just it. I, I really some, wanted to know what happened. I have some I guesses, but I'm really, I'm really enjoying the suspense and not knowing. Okay. <laughs> it's fun. It's it fun. is. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is real. It is fun not having 
any like having some vague guesses, but no real solid idea what the consequences are and just sort of sailing right through. <laughs> this, this, this might be the first, um, first show. I actually would look forward to failing almost every role just to understand what to be on the scenes. <laughs> like if we failed the merger, what would have happened? <laughs> we'll yeah. never know. Well, I was like, man, if you fail this, which one of you gets to live? Like that was yeah. where my mind first went to. <laughs> Does the body become a pile of goop? Like what happens? <laughs> That was well. No, I think the body would have been fine. Table. Just let's just be clear here. <laughs> no, natural ones can be pretty table. powerful. <laughs> I figured it was a. Ch I, I oh, my. I figured either you would go back to the way you were, or there was a chance that you would be trapped in that box that was described mm. to you. <laughs> mm. You can't interact with the world. Yeah, the best pilot who has no limbs. <laughs> Look, I gave you the option to leave Van Dorn in with the what is the Pokemon thing? The like trainer, transhuman you know? interface device. <laughs> yeah, meta dimensional space. Yeah, that one. So many times. <laughs> that was on purpose. The I Pokemon. Know. I do appreciate. It. I do also think something A that's going to be really cool. Piece of technology. <laughs> I think another thing that's going to be really cool about us taking this flipping. path <laughs> and getting into the interface is it's going to make some of Minerva's future ideas on how to experiment with this make more sense to the captain. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Might yeah, a I mean... make a little bit more sense to be like, let me describe this to you, this landscape. And then at least you've experienced something like that to have some sort of basis of understanding it helps for sure also do we want to put bets down now on which one of us becomes a villain first right <laughs> who is corrupted by what <laughs> who is when long where? Where? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what an oath of still reference god. what would have happened if quentin had just immediately just, just chopped his arm off. That arm, right? Like, uh, like no. He didn't, didn't ask you to arm. cut your arm off. He said he no. He did blood. not. Just, just blood, right? Like, exactly. But what Jesus. if, what if Quentin had committed to that immediately? Arm you know, you wouldn't have a fucking arm, Quentin. That's what would have happened. You'd <laughs> require really medical off. emergency. I didn't ask that part. Blood. Somebody else said that. <laughs> I mean, he could, yeah, he could have just taken the "you said jump" and I'm going to go how high approach. You want a little blood? I'll give you a whole arm. Give me everything. That would have made the meeting with Iona thing. really awkward to just yeah. show up with a stump and be like, I fell down a flight of stairs. No biggie. Yeah, but then Corn <laughs> would have been very happy with you. So <laughs> fine. They can You can't just go to <laughs> Battletech and then Warhammer 40. You gotta calm down, Dynamis. You're hopping universes faster than me. All right. We can hop we can hop another one real quick here. God. All right. We go watched uh, we watched Blade 2 recently on a different server, and Dunamis looks just like Chupa. Um, <laughs> is that why people keep posting pictures asking them yeah, why I'm in movies? We're watching movies, and we're like, this looks like Dunamis. We're just going to screenshot this and throw it in and be like, we found your acting career. <laughs> There's like three or four in a row. And I was like, For anyone that's what curious, just Google Chupa. Blade 2. Chupa? Chupa. Chupa. Oh, Chupa. <laughs> it's happening. I see it. Hmm. But I'm also just hair. thinking about chupacabras now. <laughs> now we just now you get to imagine Dunamis in a chain link t shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Any closing thoughts here before we wrap out this episode? Um, Sorry, we have to wait two weeks to get another one. <laughs> I'm really, uh, I'm really curious for the next time uh, Quentin has a conversation with a spooby being, if it'll be the same one or a different one, right? Uh, and what they'll ask for. Um, I'm also, uh, <laughs> this this testing my brakes has done nothing to alleviate my concerns that Minerva is secretly a supervillain. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that too. <laughs> Good. I think if, if Van V knew about all the conversations Quentin would have, he would totally be trying to find you a sunblade or whatever the hell it's called. Mm. But you keep willingly going in every time someone's like, hey, you came in again without any defense. Wow, ballsy. Legit. Yeah, at some <laughs> point, he's got to get the, the message. Yeah. Uh, I'm also, I Minerva didn't ask because it wasn't really something that occurred to me at the time. But 
if you want to explore this dust stuff more, we really don't know anything about how this quarantine works with the rest of the people agreed. So how likely is it that we just slap ourselves in the face trying to find answers for you? <laughs> well, that's what, uh, it did cross my <laughs> mind earlier and then I forgot cause I do that, but, uh, how exactly are we supposed to conduct ourselves in this new space? We're just at like, don't mention it at all. Like willingly. We're say, leaving immediately. Right. Like, we are, but I we're think the, the next sector is. Oh, it is in the quarantine zone. You're right. But they, yeah. they they proactively scan, right? And so they would have they found do. me anyways. But then again, I found here that. you don't have to worry because the ship you're on has already flagged you. It's, you know, hey, they're clean. Right, but the second we leave the ship, how do we conduct business to not have that happen again? So elsewhere? just to be clear, the quarantine zone. It's like not everyone isn't being scanned every second. They scan ships passing through that haven't been scanned. Hmm. So yeah, we need to we're, make our we're good, good for now, but if we ever come back... The people that live on the planets are not constantly going, oh, man, I'm so glad somebody scanned me to make sure my brain isn't inhabited by dust, right? Like, <laughs> it's just ships passing through. It's passport control. Customs. Yeah, well, if we come back to the system, then that could be problematic. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not even space scanned. stations. You just, when you arrive in system, Quentin would already know that, you know, like, you'll be stopped by a ship the ship will send officers on board to scan everybody it'll that's that i will hide in the chamber that han solo built into the bottom <laughs> you mean in the smuggling compartment yes <laughs> i want to remind you that uh part of the fleet that's maintained here is Fanana fleet oh we'll they just go to them quarantine officers <laughs> yeah we're just yeah, going to them. they'll give us a stamp it's in their interest to do so now. I mean, they've agreed with you to do this. Yeah. They might yeah. not have specifically agreed to it, but this is their plan is to just whenever you right. come through. Essentially, our ship now probably carries uh, essentially a... A tag. We're allowed to be here. <laughs> yeah. Sort of stamp from Fanana as far as other Fanana mm, ships are no, going. No, they're going right? like... to put the theater on just to make sure. Yeah. But... Fair. I mean, yeah, it'd be, it'd be suspicious if people are jumping in and nobody intercepted them. It feels yes. like it'll just be right. like, we jump in and they're like, we got this one, guys. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like if, you know, when they're rolling out fast pass, everyone's at the tolls line and we just come right up and use fast pass. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Remember a time before easy pass? It sucked. <laughs> Terrible. Long lines of people fumbling with change. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Man, those are memories I didn't need to think about again. <laughs> What's up, Jed Z? I know you don't watch this show, but <laughs> <laughs> we're old. Life is long. There are 16 million people reaching the age of 18 by 2024. That's fucking insane. It's mm. a lot of people. It is. How do I reach these kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stars without week. numbers. The system <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, and even if you don't like it, we're still going to use it in almost every show going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the rules. I really do. I do too. Yeah, they're great. I got that. Uh, I made an account on that site you sent me. The one where you can make ships and characters on. Oh, yeah. uh, Freebooter? Yeah. Yes. I've just been having a blast with Freebooter. Yeah. It's fantastic. I don't know about making characters, but, you know, I made a whole bunch of ships and it's never come up at all <laughs> because you haven't had to fight anybody in a ship, so. I mean, at this point, I we feel like we don't even need guns. We just let Minerva and psychic <laughs> powers take over for us. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that I don't think we have any psychic powers to blow up ships, but we could certainly just leave or at least try to be really hard to hit. It doesn't mean we're going to win any fights, but it means we can try to escape fights. At least try. <laughs> Offense is a good defense. What is the power Dodge. of your psychic powers against this technological terror? Right. <laughs> I think oh, this is man. it, friends. Audience at home, it makes the algorithm glad when you comment. So if you had a favorite moment in this episode or a question for the cast members, let me know because I'm here in order to keep 
freaking Ludeman out. Just weird <laughs> shit. Every time he <laughs> asks me a question, he's like, oh man, I could tell a vomit session coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> I like Is that it... you vomited four times in 11 episodes. <laughs> Truly amazing. <laughs> Is is your gift <laughs> ability like something you two worked out, or is that something part of the character class? Uh, it's a it, yeah, it's yeah. a focus. He took unique gift, and he asked me to speak to you... those you know beings that how he's been encountering. Yeah. I love that you basically took something to induce vomiting. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make this weird. It was an elective. <laughs> exactly. I chose this. <laughs> Great. All right. It was well played. I liked it. We'll see you in two weeks, folks at home. Or if you're on YouTube, I guess just wait for the video to roll to the next one. Watch those <laughs> ads, though. I hear they're really riveting.